because the knot in the navel had been released. There was a, a fearlessness with which you were living. And then in the midst of that process of continuing to live life, experiment in life, um, learn about your life, you had um, also learned a lesson about how this fearlessness could brought you into perhaps dangerous territory or experiences or phenomena. And that was a lesson in and of itself. Um, and then I was wondering about the matter of how this release from the knot in the navel related to your understanding of ego death. Well, I think probably be more appropriate to say, because it is coined that way, and even Adida spoke to that in many magazine articles and in the beginning. I think it's sure. more it's a, what is of death is the of our 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 illusion. What 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 mm -hmm. it's not that there is an ego to begin. That's one of the liberating feelings that you get when you are um, released from this identity, the body, the world that you were existing in, is that it never was there to begin with. That, 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 that There's the humor. That's the joke. At least that's my feeling. The joke mm. is it was never there to begin with. Yeah. Although what was there was the identity of name, address, telephone number, social security number, mother, father, daddy, friends, my car, your pencil, all of these mm -hmm. social identities that were really embedded in the under in the mind, in the in the in the identity identity of not just self but of other. Because as he speaks mm -hmm. in those early identification, differentiation, and desire, as soon as that split of ego is created, if you will. There's a sense of self, there's a sense of other, and then there's a sense of world. The three primary identities, self, other, and world, are uh, instantaneously formed. So all of that mm. is, is, a, is, is a social uh, fabrication, but it's a psychological. <laughs> it's not just simple, like Timothy Leary would be going to Copenhagen in 1961, telling the psychologist there in Copenhagen that it's all a game and there's no ego to begin with. You know, no, that's that's not going to work. Because it's deeper than just the... I only got it on the physical level or the lower mental level. Okay, important note. Mm. Right? Mm. I, did, I didn't have a sense of a higher dimensions mm. of things although it did bring me a sense of liberation mm -hmm. in, a, in a in a kind of stratosphere mm. so up to up to thirty six thousand feet or whatever you know mm. didn't jettison me in, into you know there were other experiences during that period of time but with the light and the third eye and being dissolved, all of us. But they were that. But the, the fundamental understanding of no ego or ego death was mm. basically, and I think this in the beginning, he really said he did not want to emphasize that release in the navel because he said in the early, early, early teachings, it, it, would, ref it would bring people's attention to the body. Right, okay. And yeah. he said he didn't want to do that. So he okay. de-emphasized Mm, he specifically mm. said he de-emphasized the that vital shock for him or the release of the navel. He right. de-emphasized that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So again, um, you know, I really appreciate hearing you describe this and then your development further and gr growing and learning in terms of discriminating in relationship to the experience because. Now what you're describing is um, the discriminative intelligence that you became very acutely aware of, even when you described your first reception, you know, really profound reception, and even prior to coming into his physical company of the intelligence um, that is not philosophically based, but the intelligence of the heart. Mm. 
Yeah, and, 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 and one of the things I would like to add to this conversation is that you, as I saw for myself, is that anything I attached to immediately mm. brought in its opposite. And anytime yeah. I was and anytime I was trapped in a thought or a conception or an understanding, I realized that that was a double bind. I was continually, mm. if I reached out or tried to 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 work with the mind or or, or get cosmic or philosophical, whatever, I always saw that that was a trap, and I I was stuck for many, many years in that double-edged sword mm. where the where the where the where the where the double bind was paramount. Right. And so yeah. it was it was almost hellish in a lot of ways. There was liberation, but there was an mm -hmm. extremely uh, 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 an enormous amount of tapas that yes. went along with that included madness. It completed included uh, ecstasies of of God realization, whatever. But as a Buddhist, not being that kind of God oriented, it didn't get me into you know Jesus too much. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, though it wasn't like Ali Ali Humphrey, although it was in a lot of ways. It only mm -hmm. initiated. It, that's why I say it's the beginning. Or he says it's the beginning of the real process. Mm, mm. Yeah. And so at that point in time, you also would not have been aware of the manner in which that um, the divine grace that is always present in relationship to everyone and everything is active. And I mean, and, and was active even, you know, of course, prior to Adida's incarnation, <laughs> because we had a unique function in this seeming late time <laughs> as, as as this universe is manifesting apparently <laughs> but not unreal <laughs> love those paradoxes um you would not have been aware of the descent process that he specifically describes in terms of the the navel being being well, penetrated well, what was so descent what aware. was descent was the fullness of the belly the fullness of the vital I, mean, yeah. I was i was a very strong person i was a very vital i mean i could use that vital energy so mm. it was an extent i was not totally where i as i am now of the spinal line sure i was not aware of that mm. only later through meditation did mm. i realize the spinal aspect of this conductivity it was only the decent and it really didn't have a decent because it was just full i really yeah. you know, at that so, point. so mm. it was still connected very much with the first second and third stages of, of primary identity and, and energy and, but what was alive was the conductivity, was the energy. But I didn't understand it as that. The heart was open and feeling that. But the sense of pressure on the head, pressure on the descent, the fullness of the navel, and then the outbreath take going up the back, which is now, you know, probably the more of an emphasis now. It's 77 years old. It's not the descent as much as the ascent. So, right. um, yeah. So in the beginning, it, it didn't have that. It was, uh, the, it was the, the conductivity was fully on the, as you say, the descent, but it was just filling, filling mm. the belly, filling the navel, mm. and using sexual energy. Because then, it, you know, that that uh, that brought in a lot of sexual energy too. So then, you know, I I was, I was alive in that dimension. And so, did you do much experimentation in that regard then, and and, and study much about um, the yoga of sexuality and in in technical terms? No. No, I just uh, I learned more of my sexuality with, from women than with anything else. Right. Just dealing, and, but, but, but probably one 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 of the more deepest. Uh, senses that I really became aware of is because 
I'm now wanting to blend. I want to blend in. I want to, with a woman, I want to blend. I want to be inside the woman. I want to be inside. I want to go. And I realized that you could never be inside another person. Right. Okay. You were always bodily and psychically. You were you only had the reflective mechanism of the mind. You only had the reflective, you could never be, you could never be another person. You could never penetrate to be as the other person was. Mm -hmm. You could never merge to be one. You could merge and feel in a certain feeling sense. But mm -hmm. I could never enter your mind. I could never. I mean, I, I you know you could read people and whatever emotionally, but there was this. There's a very subtle. Um, this is where I really came to to be a re, re understanding the what Adidas speaks of. This is a reflective mechanism. That that you're in a hologram. You're in a you're in a hallucination. You're not really in another world you're in one world but this one world is your perception it's not you could never penetrate another person's mind or world or other you could i could never be inside another person mm -hmm. i can mm -hmm. i can never be inside that other person that's maybe that's, that's my limitation but i've read that's been confirmed for me over and over again and that's why i have my understanding now is that this is truly a hallucination this is a hologram i'm in a hologram mm -hmm. and this is a, a reflective the world is a reflective mechanism yes there is you out there and there's a car and there's a tree but fundamentally that is being um um uh, it's 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 a perceptual phenomenon. It's a subjective phenomenon, primarily. Right. Right. It's not objective. It's all subjective. Even though most art and science, and math and science, has now come to that with in the '30s, but they still haven't got it. They're still practicing the objective world. But this is this is another uh, uh, element to to uh, understanding that i i slowly 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 understood that uh we are and i don't mean it to be isolating island kind of thing but there is uh, the hallucination this is a, a hallucination so this, I, I actually haven't heard anyone speak about this specifically in this regard. So this is um, an interesting aspect of your process. Um, and what you seem to be indicating that this is something that continues, or have you come to a greater understanding in relationship to what you just described? No, I under, no, I don't know. Well, no, it's only been confirmed again and again. And I really, so what it does, it gives me, I understand the limitations. That one is the, the, the psychobiography of the body and the, and the world and everybody has, is, is up against. And I also mm. understand that you or anybody in the world that I work or deal with, my wife or my partner, or whoever, you know, they, cannot penetrate I can never ask them to come into me to 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 so there's this this play that we have as self and other and relationships and intimacy and you know there's a certain place that I cannot go into you and you cannot come into me I am responsible for as much as I can feel and be mm. with you in your feeling mm. on a certain level on the emotional level mm. so i'm speaking in in a in a in a, in a, in a psychic kind of a deeper sense of connection mm. um 
of unity, of oneness. Okay. So I often will hear you use the term, we're splitting hairs. Yes. Here. Okay, so, but not that that paradox or those the splitting of the hairs is um, is pointing to something that is significant in terms of our ability to understand the nature of nature or the condition within which we are arising. And, right. and uh, you're, you're, right, you're hitting a point right in the head of the argument of ideas and understanding of anything. Is that when you when you get when you get when because this is where the fights are this is where the wars are we can agree at, at a thirty yard line we can agree at a twenty yard line we can agree at a ten yard but when you get down to the Mariyamaka, when you get down to the to, to the to the philosophical and the, and the, and the is and the not is and this and that and the splitting of the hair you can never get a complete under, this is what he calls perfect knowledge in the sense is that you cannot get um, two, as long as there is two, both two have to become individual one. You can never merge the two to perfect, perfect unity. You're already in unity. The prior, the prior, the prior condition. The prior unity is already there, and as he, and you start to enter into any kind of agreement or self and other or male female or up and down or moon sun, and these two, as long as it's in a conditional world, mind or body, or feeling or excitement, you're never gonna mind. you never they're never gonna come together. It's only yes. in the because they're priorly. It's only in the yes. transcendence. Yes. Okay. Of these yeah. two, that they become yeah. one. Yeah. And then there is so, a recognition. It's only in the recognition. Yes. Ah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this is this just this conversation. These last few minutes or so, um, is whoa that this understanding and then how to um comprehend. Uh, either verbally or communicating through writing um, uh, to describe an experience. Um, all of this occurs in the the through the mechanism of attention, and attention being an extension, if it is an extension of the act of the ego that creates the two. This is the cause. This is why it's causal. Because it's not, it, you can't even, you can't work this out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is where the surrender is not your surrender. Because once this starts, the process starts, this is all great. You have no, you have no yeah. plan this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're, yeah, the ground you're upon being, which you stand. <laughs> you are. Uh, yeah, surrender happens. <laughs> Exactly. You participate in that. You volunteer for that. You know, and and that is you, have, you, you really have no you have no choice. You don't right. the choice. You don't even have a choice anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's because of what has been revealed and the lessons that you have received and taken responsibility for. There is there is this understanding that is that it goes beyond experiential aspects of the psychobiography and of the ego and the mechanism of the body mind and meaning body mind and also the philosophical aspects of cognizing it um then you enter into yes there's the spiritual process but there's transcendental spiritual there's spiritual and then there's transcendental but then there's transcendental spiritual which is the uniqueness of adi da's revelation in relationship to what ego death is and what identity is mm. And that's why he is so incredibly, um, I don't know what tomorrow would do. Um, we, we would be, in a, we would be in, in, in really tough, tough place without his, his wisdom and who he, what his incarnation is about. Because nowhere, nowhere does this get fully um, revealed. 
and and it and it is only in your own process that does that that, that his revelation become apparent. This yes. is his. This you're you're entering into his. Yeah. His yeah. his place. His place. This is not. Yeah. Yes. And and this even through language, as he indicates, there's always a limit. So that's why language is merely an art form. Um, even any any manifestation that we it's, recognize as a modification or permutation of unqualified light can only serve as a threshold form. And this is what got me into Korbisky through Watts. It got me into neurolinguistics. It got me into Wittgenstein because this is where philosoph philosophy has gotten into language. And then, yeah. you know, and so if you want to study the traditions, the, you see the limitations of language or what the form of language is and what the limits of language. And you see what the world, what's their understanding of it. And then, you know, oh, well, you got neurolinguistics and you got uh, Wittgenstein, who's the epitome of, you know, that school of uh, language being the, the basis of reality. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the limits of what the world has has come up with. They're approaching. Mm -hmm. They're 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 getting closer. <laughs> but mm -hmm. and this is where Adidas' revelation surpasses mm -hmm. or illuminates. Illuminates, yes, and not not negates. No, 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 no. No dissociation. No lack of respect. No acknowledgement of certain necessities that reveal the nature of the divine process in, in its full spectrum of because possibilities, it, but also the transcendence of all those possibilities. Because a lot of the search, as he's pointing to, has a has a noble quality to it. has a tra has a kind of transcendental quality to it. It's a it's 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 a it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a heart matter for mm -hmm. for for people who are really investigating whether it's the divinity and Christ, Buddha, Allah, philosophy, depth psychology, art, beauty, music. Mm -hmm. I mean, there mm -hmm. is an authentic search, if you will for mm -hmm. beauty, for truth, for bliss. There is that. And there are elements to beauty that is illuminating. There's beauty in nature. There's beauty in life. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it does illuminate the heart and brings people together and understanding that the life in nature is, is at a critical juncture and we're doing terrible things to Mother Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. nothing is negated, but mm. to have that not to his peace is different than what the basis of struggling to make peace. Two, two trying to be one. <laughs> well, yeah. see, this is this is the criticism he had with Carolyn and and uh, what's his name when they were bringing to his peace to the table of these people who. Right. When they got into the room, they could speak together pretty well for two or three days. But then as the days got more intense and the narrowing down of the differences started to become intensified, because when you start to eliminate, 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 you're going to also illuminate the differences. Mm -hmm. So we can mm -hmm. agree. At Life. Least. Yeah, yeah. But when we're getting down to those those two places. It's only in, yeah. as we said, the transcend transcendence of that. Right, right. Well, and that's where the demonstration is is absolutely the responsible capability for the demonstration of that is what will enable the cooperation plus tolerance equals peace. And although Arida indicates that that can be embraced at a fundamental human level it, it, it's not an enlightened person he's speaking to he's speaking to everyone yeah because that's the nature it's the prior unity it's prior unity it's not like you gotta make 
us whole. Yeah. 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 So and it's also then not waiting waiting for some kind of um magic to happen from an other to cause you to be capable of that. All it, at it's once. it's actually a risk, yeah. It's a it's a humanly mature responsibility. Um, and it does it then that does correspond to knots being undone through the freeing of energy and attention um in list through listening. And 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 one thing about um what I hear you describing too, and, and this is not uncommon again, speaking of the super physics of the process, is that and this is what I can confess in my own ordeal over decades of this direct relationship with Adi Da and in relationship entirely in relationship to the world and to the great tradition as a whole in various aspects, and particularly through study and in relationship to people who have differing processes and practices, is that listening, hearing, and seeing is a perpetual process. That's the eternal conversation. It's not like you progress from listening and then to hearing and then to seeing and then to the perfect practice. It's all the inherent process that is perpetually occurring in the context of the bright it magnifies itself that's all it's doing it's magnifying itself yeah, yeah. that's yeah. all it is you see yeah. continually yeah. continually not just hour by hour not just yeah. by minute by minute not by yeah. second by second it's yeah. by breath by breath but even in between the breaths and in, in the it's just yeah yeah that's that's the prior to attention where attention is resolved in its source. And that's the sat song. That's Adi Da's transmission. And and that's where how that it's that transmission, that blessing grace, where the can, process occurs. And when you really get it, you get caught in just attention. And that's the real yes. double bind. Yes. And that's where that's, he even Oh, well, he's, he says he gets to a place where there's... Like jumping off place. <laughs> I, well, it's not even the, he says you only have two choices, complete peace or suicide. I mean, he does yeah. say those things. Uh, no, I know. Believe me, I, I'm a very, very... <laughs> you know, that was that, that well, distinction if, was initiated if you in 1986. If you recognize that, then you know that's the place that you have to be in to be yeah. purified. So yeah. there's a and grace that you're 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 priorly aware of, no matter what yeah. crisis you're in or whatever you're yeah. in. Yeah. Without that and, free. Yeah. 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 And then synchronous with that is that while you may have assumed that all of the patterns that you have assumed to be the I, that you are identifying via the identification, differentiation, and desire, gross, subtle, and causal, any way, words that you may want to use, is that you think, oh, I've completely transcended. You know, I'm no longer identified with any aspect of my infantile personality. And then, lo and behold, life presents itself with a conjunction that smacks you in the face. You know, in the heart, in the navel, in the genitals, wherever it does. And immediately, if you can observe, understand, and stay steadfast in the fidelity to the bright reality truth as Adi Da transmits it as Satguru Yoga, Satguru Siddha Yoga, then that's where the, the release occurs of identification. And it, it's not as though, okay, done and dusted with that part of the psychophysical right. being. Mm. That's the difference between the great path of return and, and Adi Da's process of the, being established in the source condition, not as that which is to be felt towards or sought, but the recognition that that is the always already condition of everyone and everything. So the mission of not two, you know, can only be you can only exercise that in the context of a space where beings are able and willing to be free enough and open enough to release the conceptions of that which indicates duality. Right, right. Yeah. That takes a brave heart and a passionate yeah. heart. Well, you know, this is the subtle nature of this process, and this is why sadhana is so essential. It's not just a, an understanding or a a good uh, LSD trip 
or uh, whatever. It right. Is, uh, or, or a great sex or a great sexual experience. Exactly. I mean, you know, it goes it goes through every every chakra, so to speak, must be penetrated in the illusion understood. But different beings will have more energies of, of associated grasping towards or seeking in relationship to. And that's why it unfolds so spontaneously and um, uniquely. And then and then artfully must be the process then becomes an artful process, which Adi Da describes to understand the process. And in him, you must understand him as an artist. <laughs> yeah. I can I can confirm that, you know, and, and then and, and perpetual experience of that as he even is no longer physically alive, because all of those art forms, you know, are the treasures. They're the means of, of a passageway, you know, of access. Um, and no one should be denied that access. Well, in truth, nobody is. No, not in truth. Not in truth. However, in terms of what he manifested as the treasures, you know, that right. are are real. No, no, you know, you can call it a hallucination, but what yeah. it is not unreal. Exactly. And that's the big that's the big distinction. And there is still the process, there is still his 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 yeah. his treasures, and and that's yeah. what he was calling everybody to. Yes. You know. That's Otherwise, you're, you're creating a way or a process based on a psychosis of revisions, as if we don't exist, <laughs> as well, what you were also talking about earlier. <laughs> Do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> oh, excuse my language. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So perhaps we're getting close to a good amount of time, you reckon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So, yes, um, and and I can refer back again to that little bit that you wrote, and I'll put a link with, um, you know, what we have spoken about here, because there are also more subtle nuances to what you communicated there that I'd like to go into the next time that we speak. Okay. Well, I've enjoyed the conversation, and I appreciate your uh, asking me to be with you for this time. Yeah. And, and for anyone who's listening, you know, thank you. And I hope this is a service in, in your divine process. Yeah. All right. Much love to you. You too. Thank you. The only way to pass through the principal mood is to go directly to the heart and not waste any time bullshitting in fear. Now, of course, in practice, there will be a certain amount of theater in everybody's case, and perhaps in most people's cases, there'll be lots of uh, cycles and phases and insights and so forth. But the process I'm describing is instant, direct, present. And it's just as much a matter of a penetration of a moment of fear as it is a penetration of any ordinary thought. Sheer terror coming out of the unconscious is no weightier an object than uh, the simplest reverie or thought. The process I'm talking about is it is a process in consciousness in which you see the present event of your existence is this contraction and know what just precedes it in every moment in which that occurs there is a natural falling out of the binding limitation that you are compulsively creating into an unnameable sense of existence that is the natural state it is the intuition of the heart whenever it occurs. It is simply that when a life becomes founded in that intuition, that intuitive consciousness comes to the front of that life and begins to work upon all the events of life most directly.